Hello everyone, welcome to Spec eLearn, the online learning channel dedicated to chemical engineers. Reboilers, Types, Applications and Selection Part 2 Subscribe now before you forget. By subscribing, you will get notification of all the future videos so that you do not miss out on any one of them. Reboilers Part 1 a recap. In the part 1, we discuss the functions of reboiler, how does the reboiler work, types of reboilers and vertical thermosiphon reboilers in detail. We discuss engineering aspects related to design of vertical thermosiphon reboilers. You should have understood the significance of elevations of the column above the reboiler because it is a critical design parameter. Reboiler part 2. In part 2, you will learn the other important types of reboilers and broad selection criteria. Our discussion will be focused on forced circulation reboilers, kettle type reboilers and the most advanced core and kettle type reboilers. First circulation reboilers. First circulations are the choice for viscous and highly fouling service. For circulation reboilers are similar to the vertical thermosiphon reboilers except that a pump is needed to feed the reboiler inlet with liquid from the column bottom or the draw off pan. The design of force circulation reboiler assumes that the heat is transferred by force convection. The general design procedure for Sherlandy heat exchanger can be used for designing force circulation reboilers. A pump circulates a liquid from the column through the tubes back to the column. The pumping power and the maintenance costs add to the operating cost of the system. Unlike thermosiphon reboiler, the elevation of the column base above the reboiler is not a critical design parameter. The pump takes care of the circulation flow rate needed as well as the pressure drop in the circuit. However, the bottom liquid is at its boiling temperature. The elevation of the pump center line from the bottom of the column is important to provide adequate NPSH for the pump to prevent cavitation. Low NPSH pump will be a better option. For circulation reboiler can be of two types. One vertical type, two horizontal type. This figure is an illustration of forced circulation vertical reboiler. Note that except for the pump and the elevation requirement, the internal design aspect is similar to the circulating thermosiphon vertical reboiler. This is an illustration of horizontal for circulation reboiler. Note that the internal column arrangement for the reboiler circuit is the same as the thermosiphon horizontal reboiler.
The friction losses in the system include friction losses in the piping from the pump discharge to the reboiler inlet nozzle delta P1. Friction losses across a reboiler delta P2. Friction losses in the vapor piping connecting the reboiler and the column nozzle delta P3. The total friction losses in the reboiler circuit is delta P which is equal to delta P1 plus delta P2 plus delta P3. The head developed by the pump should be greater than or equal to the total friction losses in the system plus the static head in the discharge due to the elevation difference between the pump and the column nozzle connecting the reboiler return line. The advantages of force circulation reboilers are one good circulation and hence good heat transfer. Two, it is suited to fouling liquids. Three, the column elevation above the reboiler is less compared to the thermosiphon reboiler. The disadvantages of force circulation reboilers are 1. A pump is needed 2. Additional power consumption and increase in capital and operating cost Kettle type reboiler Kettle type reboiler is an important class of reboilers widely used in the refineries and petrochemical units for large heat duties. Illustrated in the sketch is a kettle type reboiler. In kettle type reboiler, the tube bundle is immersed in a pool of liquid in a oversized vessel as shown. The submergence of tube bundle is ensured by an overflow wear at a height of roughly 50 to 100 mm above the surface of the topmost tube of the tube bundle. A liquid flows from the column sump to the bottom of the kettle shell. The liquid is partially vaporized and the vaporized liquid is separated from the liquid in a vapor disengagement space above the tube bundle. The vapor flows to the piping connected to the column through a riser. The liquid overflows the wear and is collected in a compartment in the same shell. This liquid forms the bottom product and is withdrawn under level control. Although being treated as a pool boiling device, there is good circulation within the bundle induced by density difference between the boiling liquid in the bundle and the single phase liquid around the edge of the bundle. So the kettle reboiler is a type of thermosiphon with a large open space above the bundle functioning as a vapor liquid disengagement space as illustrated in the figure above. The advantages of kettle type reboiler 1. Large heat duty and tan down 2. Removable dew bundle for cleaning 3. Elevation of the column above reboiler is less compared to vertical thermosiphon reboiler. The disadvantages of kettle type reboiler 1. 
large flow space requirement that is plot area required is high two because of overstaged vessel reboiler has large inventory of liquid as explained earlier the kettle tape reboilers are commonly employed where the process requires high turn down capability that means when the range of operation varies widely now let me introduce you to the most innovative and advanced reboiler technology core in kettle tape reboiler Core and kettle is an alternative to conventional cell and tube kettle type reboilers. Instead of tube bundle, the external shell houses one or more plate fin heat exchangers. The advantages of core and kettle type reboilers are 1. It provides around 10 times more heat transfer surface area compared to conventional cell and tube kettle tape reboiler. It offers up to 20 times more UA than the equivalent cell and tube unit. The superior heat transfer performance can be used advantageously to produce significantly more compact unit for new plants considerably more performance can be provided to existing plants by replacing the existing tube bundle with a braced aluminum heat exchanger this figure is an illustration of a core and kettle reboiler it consists of two flat fin heat exchanger housed inside a shell the warm stream fluid which is usually steam enters the braced aluminum heat exchanger through a steel nozzles on the vessel shell the inlet nozzles of the heat exchanger are connected to the inlet pipes of the exchanger coming from column bottom by aluminum to stainless steel transition coupling Inside the heat exchangers the warm stream cools as it flows against the cold stream from the column This figure is a photograph of an actual core and kettle tape reboiler The cold stream enters the vessel either as a liquid or a two phase liquid through a down come up pipe coming from a distillation column bottom the liquid level is formed outside the core to create a liquid head that drives the cold stream of liquid through the core the cooled or condensed warm stream that is steam leaves the core and the shell as a condensate the cold stream vapor along with unvaporized liquid leaves the vessel through the outlet nozzles to the column bottom where the liquid is separated the vapor moves up the column instead of steam other vapors at high temperatures can also be used as a heating medium in this reboiler to facilitate inspection and cleaning if required a manway is provided in the shell The notable operating feature of this design of core and kettle reboiler is that there is no vapor liquid disengagement phase above the core at the top of the shell. Instead, the liquid and vapor stream flows out of the core and the shell through two numbers of symmetrically arranged vapor piping. to the bottom of the distillation column 
the separation of the liquid and vapor mixture takes place here at the bottom of the distillation column. Unlike the kettle tape reboiler, where there is a liquid overflow compartment for product withdrawal, the core in kettle, the product is withdrawn from the bottom of the distillation column directly. This figure shows a fully assembled coring kettle, braced aluminum heat exchanger ready after fabrication for dispatch. This figure is another example of coring kettle, braced aluminum heat exchanger installed in a natural gas liquid fractionation column. This is to demonstrate that how coring kettle has progressed and found new application in cryogenic industries. The coring kettle reboiler allows close temperature approaches down to 1 degree centigrade. This close approach has been exploited in C3, C2 splitters in olefin plants to reduce the compressor horsepower by at least 15% in the heat pump system. Selection of reboiler type In the two videos on reboiler, you have learned the various types of reboilers. In the closing comments, I would like to emphasize on the factors to be considered in the selection of reboiler. To sum up, the major factors include total heat duty required, plot area available, fouling characteristics of the liquid, temperature approach available and required. All these four factors to be considered with due importance in deciding the final choice. Please subscribe to our channel and get updates on the upcoming courses by pressing the subscribe button. It will motivate us to produce free knowledge rich video content for you. With this we have come to the end of the presentation of part 2 of the two part series on reboilers. Please give a comment if any about this video after you finish viewing the video. Share with your friends and colleagues to reach out to large number of carry over into professionals and students. Thank you for watching.